specifically targeting children. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the book of 1 Samuel, chapter, chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 3. Yes, the classic. The classic. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, numbers 31. Numbers chapter 31. Amazing. These people will never defend it. Now, you know what he's doing? No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Don't, no, 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 don't interrupt me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, he is already pulling out more hadith to spin them so that he doesn't have to defend the Bible. He thinks by reading the hadith literature, he's going to save the Bible. What about your scripture? You Trinitarian disbeliever, what about your scripture? What about the Bible? Targeting children. There is nothing in the Quran, in the Hadith, where you can show me specifically where the Prophet said or Allah said, target children. In the Bible, we have specific verses, target children. In the Old Testament, the references are there. 1 Samuel 15, 3, and the book of Numbers, chapter 31, um, verse 17. Yeah. And in the book of Revelation, God, Jesus, when he comes back, he will specifically target the children of Jezebel. Why? Over to you and respond. Respond. Don't read hadith. Respond to Bi the Bible. Start it from the beginning. From the beginning. Start it from three minutes. He's losing three seconds. Can you please start from three minutes? There are three seconds less there. Okay. He needs those three seconds. Come on. Yeah. Ready? Just three minutes. Just, just, just start. Just start. Just, just start. press start. Yes. There you go. There we go. Thank you. Right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for saying. So, ladies and gentlemen, why is Adnan floundering in this discussion? For those of you that came late, let me just actually remind Adnan of the sequence of events. Because Adnan has clearly become the entertainer this evening rather than the debater, and he's going for cheap shots indeed. rather than sticking for the, ch the, the topic. Indeed, as he admits. Yes, indeed. I was debating a sheikh who ran away by about the fact that Allah punishes and Allah takes the burdens and the effects of other people and applies it to others on the day of judgment. That's what that debate was about. And Adnan burst into that conversation. And now he wants us all to debate the Old Testament and what happened to the Canaanites. No, we aren't changing the topic because you're in a sticky situation, Adnan. We're not running away from the topic because you don't have answers. All he has done is assert that I'm a liar. All that he has done is assert that I don't understand the text. All that he has done is throw up red herrings and try to change the topic about the Trinity or about Israel's conquest of Palestine rather than wrestle with the words of his own literature. And why does he want to do that, ladies and gentlemen? Why? Because he has been beaten for the last hour of conversation. That's why, ladies and gentlemen. Don't interrupt. Please, please. This is what your hadith says. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they're using this to distract from my time. They're using this to distract from my time. Good Muslim tactics, and the Dai are all in on it. Christians learn lessons. Look at how they're behaving. This is what their hadith says. When it will be the day of resurrection, Allah would deliver to every Muslim. So there you go. It's like parcel force. He takes a Jew and a Christian and he puts them to a Muslim and he says, listen, a Jew or a Christian and say, that, that's the Jew or the Christian, is your rescue from where? From hellfire. That's what their hadith say. So the Jews and the Christians are being used by Allah to rescue Muslims from hell, according to their hadith. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Time up, time we, up. Is it time? Time up, yes, three minutes. Okay, oh. ladies and gentlemen, yeah, time up, three minutes. I couldn't see. Thank you, sister. Can you start my time now? 
Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I am indeed an entertainer because this is very entertaining for me. This discussion is indeed very entertaining for me and I'm pretty sure it's entertaining for everyone else watching and listening to this guy waffle. Not once did he try to defend the Bible and I'm continuously defending my literature. I stand by every single hadith he has quoted. I stand by it, I believe in it, I cherish it, I celebrate it and I love it. You know why? Because I know what they mean. The hadith he keeps repeating that the Jew and the Christian will go to hellfire for a Muslim. It is very clear that the disbelieving Jews and disbelieving Christians like him, the Trinitarians, they will go to hellfire. I'm standing by that. Am I, am I running away from that? No. Am I washing, am I washing, yes. am I watering down my faith? Absolutely no. not. I'm standing by that. The disbelieving Jews, the disbelieving Christians, but then the Quran tells us something amazing, that those Jews, and those you, Christians you who believe in Allah, who believe in Allah, فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Surah Baqarah, Chapter 2, the Quran tells us those Jews and those Christians who believe there is no fear for them and there is no harm to them. So what is this liar doing now? He's trying to put all the Jews and all the Christians in hellfire, which is not the case. Those Jews, those Christians who believe in Allah, who believe in God, they're not Trinitarians, they're not pagans, they're not mushrikeen, they're not disbelievers, they are going to paradise. We believe that. The Quran tells us that. When they believe, they go to paradise. What is this liar trying to do is, he has one hadith, he's obsessed with it, and he's, uh, <clears throat> he's going on about it. One minute, one minute, one minute. You have one minute, you have one minute. Oh, okay, so I thought the time. So ladies and gentlemen, why is he not defending the Bible? I have clarified repeatedly. I stand by the Hadith. The disbelievers will go to hellfire and replace Muslims. I'm saying that. Am I, am I right? Hello. Am I running away? Am I running away? I'm not running away. I'm not running away. I'm standing. Okay. Okay. Am I? I am not running away. But this guy, for some reason, is not talking about the Bible. Bible, God, seconds, God seconds. targeting children, killing innocent children. Why is God, and he's, watch, 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 watch. No response, no response. Can you, now I want the audience to get the answer from him right now. Ask him, ask him to answer. I'm done. I don't blame Adnan from running away for the debate. And why is he running away from the debate? Why? Because the debate that he interrupted, the debate that he insisted that he would come into, and you can see the full version of it on SoCo Films, ladies and gentlemen, was the debate Are these live? Are these live? The They're judgment, going live, right? As the debate about the judgment of God on Judgment Day and the fact that God takes what he does to others and their sins he's not answering and places me. them on he's not Adnan answering me. and Christians he's not or Muslims. And the reason answer. why Adnan wants to change the debate about Canaanite conquest is because he does not have an answer. The New Testament, and he only did, ladies the book of Revelation, is to affirm that he believes. Don't interrupt Adnan. All that he did is affirm that he believes it. That is not answering the criticism. But why okay. go on any further? Okay. He's already admitted that my criticism is true. So I will spend my last minute and 30 seconds talking about the only way, brothers and sisters, that you will escape the judgment of God. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. I don't want him to cry later on that he didn't get the time. Let him finish. The reality is that we will all stand before the judgment seat of God and we will have to answer for our sins That's right. unless we accept the mercy of God that has been freely given to us 
in Christ, through Christ. You can either take that check to cancel your debt to the bank and cash it, or you can go and take your debt to God and pay for it yourself. Forgiveness has been given liberally and freely. And you, Adnan, will answer for your sins and your blasphemies against the Trinity and your lies against Christians when you say we worship If you do not accept that free mercy given to you by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, Adnan, let's do one more round and then we'll stop. Ladies and gentlemen, have I responded to every yeah, single no. point yeah. he raised yeah. about no. Islam? Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. yes. Have I responded to my claims about the Bible once? No. no. That wasn't the debate. No. That wasn't okay. The debate. That wasn't the debate, but you brought the questions. You brought the points. You dragged no, the points into the discussion, and you I responded did. to them. I you responded did. to every single hadith you brought up. I responded to the very first hadith no, you, you mentioned. Didn't. That that no, are dis, that disbelievers will replace the believers. I responded to it. You brought up something about children being killed in war, and I responded no, to I it. You, you, brought, you, you brought up, you brought up, you brought up a mother being shielded for the deaths of her children. I responded. I responded to it. But no, when I mentioned when I mentioned something from the Bible, you go deaf, dumb, and blind. You don't respond. Why is God? Why is God? Why is God? No, 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 you're interrupting me. Why is God? Why is God? Why is God obsessed with killing children? Why is God obsessed with killing children? You, you, you no, he's interrupting me. Bob. No, I'm talking to him. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am done with this guy. I've made my points very clear. Those of you who have sense, who have sincerity, whom God has blessed with a, a, a good soul, you will see where the truth lies. There is only one God, and he alone deserves to be worshipped. And that's not the Trinitarian God. That God is not a true God. That God does not exist. That God came about in the fourth century. The Christians for the first 300 years, they were debating this God. How can you debate the nature of God? 300 years, these people were debating, and then they carved a God. In the late 4th century, in the year 381 CE, they decided that God has three persons, and all three persons are distinct with independent personalities, independent minds. A personality has an independent mind. So God, who is one, he has three persons, three independent minds right if that's the case this cannot be one god this is not one god so ladies and gentlemen i'm done with this guy i have nothing more to say and i'm not interested in talking to him anymore thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi mic's over to you let them continue no problem let them have the victory parade thank you thank you thank you for giving me the chance Give me, give me. Uh, give me, give me.